Hello friend, have you ever thought of knowing more in-game details? From time, to depth, and even ores and treasures? Perhaps you just want to know the moon phase, so you can buy those exclusive items from NPCs, or finally go werewolf hunting for your bandage. Well, with the cell phone, you can. In fact, you know almost everything. And I mean almost everything. It can even act as a magic mirror. But well, with such amazing functionality, it comes at a cost. It takes 13 items to craft, and 3 of them are extremely annoying to get. If you're overwhelmed, no worries, you've come to the right place. This video will cover the easiest way to get all the components, and lots of extra tips to make your cell phone journey much easier. If you're new here, I'm Zuzukorn, and I aim to entertain you, encourage you, and offer you a place to call home. So subscribe now and join the Zuzukorn family. Let's get right into the components. The easiest component to acquire is the gold or platinum watch. All this requires is chain, made from iron at an anvil, and a couple of gold or platinum bars. With those materials, head over to a table and chair. Yes, a table and chair, and craft the watch. Congratulations, you've acquired your first component. This component tells you the time up to the nearest minute, so it's really useful for timing your boss fights and events at night. Next, the depth meter is pretty simple to acquire as well. This accessory drops from bats, jungle bats, cave bats, ice bats, and giant bats. It also drops from salamanders, crawdads, and giant shellies. You're really likely to come across a number of these during your playthrough, so these won't be too hard to find. This gives you a reading on how deep you are in the world, which is useful for making farms or going after depth-specific drops. If you wish to make farming drops much easier, you can do so by boosting your luck. This is a somewhat complicated topic, but just put biome torches around you, get a garden gnome, and use a luck potion if you manage to get your hands on some. Having these luck boosts increases your drop rate by a certain amount, which makes your farming go a little more smoothly. Of course, do keep in mind that it still boils down to RNG, so just pray to RNG Jesus and hope for the best. If you need some help on torch luck, you can check out this video right here. Next on our list, we have the compass. These drop from crawdads, salamanders, shellies, piranhas, snowflinkses, undead vikings, and mother slimes. This is another item that you'll probably come across often, but if you want to farm for it, well, here you go. This item tells you how east or west you are in the world. I don't really think there's much use for this, other than finding the dead sense of your world, but yeah, it's still information. Next, we have the radar, which is found in wooden surface chests. If you're lucky, you'll find one early on. If you're unlucky and can't find any, they can also be found in wooden and pearl wood crates. This tells you how many enemies are around you, which is great for telling you if you have some random ones stuck in a gap in the wall. Then we have the tally counter, which drops from angry bones and the cursed skulls in the dungeon. These aren't too difficult to get as well, but you may want to get this before you beat Plantera. Once you defeat Plantera, more enemies spawn, so it's relatively harder to get your hands on one of these. The tally counter tells you how many of a specific enemy you've killed. It goes by which enemy you hit last, and it's just a good way to track your banner progress. Next on our list, we have the metal detector. Well, this one is kind of a problem. The metal detector drops from the nymph, a rare enemy who spawns as a lost girl. The main issue with this enemy is that the spawn rate, although not insanely low, is low enough to give you trouble. Whenever you want to look for one specifically, they just don't show up for some reason. Using a water candle probably helps a lot for this one. Anyway, the metal detector drops at a 50% rate on normal worlds, so you could potentially have really horrible luck and not find one even after a few nymphs. On expert mode however, it's a guaranteed drop, so that's nice. If you're going for this, I recommend trying to get it pre-hard mode, since the nymph will spawn less often in hard mode due to the all new enemies that spawn. This accessory gives a pretty sweet effect though, it tells you when precious ores are nearby, and it also tells you when life crystals, life roots, and chests are nearby. It even tries to show you the rarer ores first. It's a nice effect when you're starting out, but it's honestly pretty redundant when you start using Spelunker potions. The next three items all come from the same source, the Travelling Merchant. Here we have the Lifeform Analyzer, the DPS Meter, 
and a stopwatch. This really depends on RNG. You need to be lucky enough for the travelling merchant to come, and lucky enough for him to sell these accessories specifically. Honestly, he sells these pretty often, so it's not totally out of reach. The only time this could be a problem is if he just doesn't ever bring the one you're still missing. If you're on a journey mode world, there's a super quick way to spawn travelling merchants. All you have to do is head over to your time setting, click dawn, then click dusk, then click dawn again. This essentially skips a day, so just keep going, dawn, dusk, dawn, dusk, until a travelling merchant spawns. This actually works for every single event as well, like blood moons, solar eclipses, and invasions. So it's a super amazing life hack. So cycle through your days and hope for the best. The DPS meter, well, it tells you your DPS. Nice for a damage check, but do note that it adds all the damage you do if you hit multiple enemies. The stopwatch tells you how fast you're moving. Not too useful, but maybe relevant for trying out what actions boost your jousting lance. The lifeform analyzer on the other hand is probably the most useful accessory ever. It tells you when rare enemies spawn, which is a huge, huge lifesaver. Remember the nymph? If one actually spawns, the lifeform analyzer will tell you it's nearby. You still have to find it yourself though, but it won't be as hard as not even knowing one's here. This is probably my favourite component of the cell phone, because it tells you where the goblin tinkerer is, the wizard, the stylist, and all that. It's nice to know when a rare enemy like a moth or ice golem spawns as well. Finally, for the decently easy to acquire accessories, we have the magic mirror or the ice mirror. I'm sure you know what this does. Well, if you don't, it teleports you back to spawn, or I guess wherever you set your spawn point with if you're using a bit to do so. These are found in chests underground and you'll probably find one normally. Just a random note here though, the mirrors teleport you home slower than a recall potion, so you might want to keep that in mind sometimes, especially if you're trying to go home in a pinch. Now, it's time for the worst three accessories. Here, we have the three fishing accessories, the sextant, the weather radio, and the fisherman's pocket guide. These are only obtainable from fishing quests given to you by the angler. The thing is, whatever reward you get is pretty random, and you can only do so once a day. There are a few ways to circumvent this, and make it a lot less cancerous to do, but I'll cover their functions first. The sextant tells you the current moon phase. This is useful if you're after moon-specific items like the mechanics rod, the steampunk wings, or if you just want to know when the werewolves spawn for their elusive bandage farming. The weather radio tells you the weather, duh, and the current wind speed. Not too sure what this is good for, but I guess it's something if you're after weather-specific enimies, like the rainbow slime or the angry nimbus. The fisherman's pocket guide on the other hand displays your current fishing power. This isn't really that useful, other than if you're hunting something like the reaver shark, but honestly, who even does that anymore? And well, I guess it's fun to see your bait power go to 666 when you have a truffle worm equipped. These accessories are not that helpful, but unfortunately, they stand between you and a completed cell phone. So let's get into the super helpful fishing tips. First of all, you can catch more than one quest fish a day. Usually, if you have one in your inventory, you can't find another. However, a quick workaround is to either drop it on the floor, or put it in your piggy bank. This essentially removes it from your inventory, so you can go on and catch as many as you want. It's a good idea to catch a few, and just store them in a chest somewhere, just so you can turn them in easily and effortlessly. If you're on a journey mode world, just research the fish. The next tip I have helps you plow through the fishing quests. Normally, you can only turn in the quest once a day. However, what the game doesn't tell you that it's once a day per character. So if you have a stockpile of quest fish, you can essentially make new characters, turn in the quest, claim the reward, then put it in your communal chest. This is helpful for the Supreme Helper Minion achievement as well. Another way to do this if you're on journey mode is to use the day skipping technique I mentioned before. That simply removes the cooldown on fishing quests, but of course, the fish will change as well. Making characters is by far the easiest method. The last tip I have for fishing is really important, so pay attention. As of 1.4, the angler will no longer give you repeats of the accessories if you already have one in your inventory. 
I repeat, you will not get repeats if you already have one in your inventory. This means that if you already have the sextant and you have it in your inventory, you will not get another one. So you are more likely to get the other two accessories that you still need. This is really important. Putting it in a chest doesn't help you at all. It has to be in your inventory. So really, don't screw yourself over. Just keep it with you at all times and you get the three accessories you need in no time. Especially with all the tips I've given above. And with that completed, combine them all. Make the Goblin Tech, the Fish Finder, the REK3000 and the GPS. Combine all four into the PDA. Then, finally, combine your PDA with the Magic or Ice Mirror for your final reward. Congratulations! You have crafted the most complex accessory in Terraria. Flex on your friends. Show them your hours of work. A cell phone is a symbol of pride and glory, so be proud of yourself. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon too for more Terraria guides and coverage. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well for more IRL stuff. This has been Zuzucorn Games. Have a nice day and have a great week ahead. Bye bye.